Hey trainers and clinicians, this is just for you. I struggle daily showing people the importance of diaphragm, breathing, internal pressure, as well as position. So I made a whole video on it. Then this video, I'm using a water bottle as well as the whiteboard to explain. I think it did a great job. Show this to your patients and hopefully they get it sooner so they understand the importance of keeping this area solid. The concepts I'm gonna go over in this are actually going to be a little bit boring to you, I'm not gonna lie, but if you hang in there, hang in there, I'm gonna use as many analogies as I possibly can for you. And if you don't get one, hopefully you'll get the other. Once you understand this, you will actually learn how to breathe and create stabilization from within your belly to actually decrease potential of back pain, disc injuries, sciatica, numbness into the leg, hip pain in the front of the hip, hip pain on the side of the hip. Okay, so we're gonna use this water bottle as an analogy of what the abdominal area is. And I'm gonna show you just on me. So we have the rib cage area right here, okay? You can see it by the division of this cage from the soft area, which we will call the belly. Now, this area right here is more uh, of what we're gonna be looking at today, but I can tell you one thing. If your ribs are up, you have zero possibility of making this function well. We have what we call the hills and valleys. If there's a hill here, you have zero possibility of doing things correctly and safely. If you drop that down, you have a much better potential, but now, if you look at me like this, if I flex and try to get these valleys in here, this isn't productive either. So actually the least aesthetic belly you can have, if I breathe in, you wanna be nice and wide. You don't want corsets, you don't want valleys, you don't want peaks, you don't want any of this stuff, okay? The, here's the reason. So proper breathing actually starts with the diaphragm. Imagine I had just a, a drape on here, say a cloth. Now the diaphragm attaches to the ribs on top. Here's our lungs on top of this thing. We breathe in, and breathing in is actually a function of what we call negative pressure. So as this thing depresses, like I'm trying to crush it, okay, it actually moves down. It moves down like a piston, okay? It starts here, and it goes down. And it attaches to the other part of that cavity, which sucks the air in, just like a vial in a hospital when you're getting medication. It just sucks it in. This is a plunger, okay? As this plunger goes down, its secondary effect, its secondary effect is to push this fluid-filled, organ-filled cavity down and compress it. Now, this cavity doesn't like to compress, which is the thing, and there's a reason why I'm going into this is because when I talk about this flare to the side, okay, rather than this tipping up, you're gonna see it is more of a sign of this area properly being compressed by this diaphragm being down like this, which is what we need. We need this dramatically and we to be effective and safe with backs, hips, hip impingement, low back pain, radiculopathy, uh, sciatica, numbness, tingling, so on, is all starts here, okay? We depress this thing down and this there, it says, well, I don't wanna be compressed and it, it bows like that. The rib cage actually goes out and the rest of the belly, the rest of the flanks, the belly, and the backside follow suit, okay? Now, I talked about the hills and valleys. If there's a divot like this thing, right? Hey, this handle right here. This thing is actually a sign of poor pressure distribution. Think of it like a fan. I have this fan right here, which should be facing downward and it's blowing down, it hits the bottom and it spreads. Spreading creates pressure areas, which we want everything equal. If it's not equal, we have these dead areas. Now they're dead areas because when you feel into here, if I push onto this thing, it feels like there's something behind it. And if you feel onto yourself, you're gonna feel like, well, it feels like a bag of air back there, okay? You fell into another area and you're like, well, yeah, that's pretty tense, all right? But you can tell it's not muscle, because muscle feels muscly. This feels like just the stuff behind it. The abdominal wall is really not that thick. So, what we wanna feel is more of like water. We want something to have been fighting, fighting back against us at all times. Now, does this pressure change sometimes when this goes down and this expands? Yeah, it does but it's still there, you gotta have something behind it. So feeling around, and I typically do this with people the uh, second or third day, is we find what we call those dead spots. A lot of times people have it right here. So what I do is I have people just stick their hand down their pants just like that, okay? I call it Al Bundy breathing. If you're, you guys are probably younger than me, I'm 35. Al Bundy used to sit there like this and he would breathe in and out. 
And it's as simple as this. If you found an area that feels like a bag of air rather than a bag of water, you need to work on it and getting it like a bag of water. This is the first step to breathing well. Now, if you cannot keep this cage down, if you cannot keep this ribs down, these ribs down, you have zero potential of this. I'll take it to the whiteboard. Okay, guys, now for the fun parts. We have that cylinder here, okay? And this is the front of you, okay? I'll draw a little head here. There's the nose, just so you can kind of tell where you're at. All right, so we have all the ab wall, the ab wall. We have the kegel muscles, which some of you are familiar with. We have the back muscles, okay? We have the rib cage, then we have this diaphragm in here, okay? Again, think of it like that fan, all right? This thing actually pushes down, and then it forces pressure this way, okay? It forces it everywhere in this cavity. Now, just imagine that water bottle because this is probably not going to be the best drawing. So it forces it everywhere, okay? This stabilizes the spine. And in this area right here, we have the spine, okay? Now the rule of this is, just like in all the, the video I did with the exercises, we want the ball and sockets here to move, okay? We got the femur, imagine deadlifting, okay, here. We have movement about this single area. This area keeps its shape, all right? The area, or the, the spine from the front, gets pushed on by the pressure, which prevents it from, from caving and breaking like this, all right? It also gets held by the muscles from the back from sliding forward. It prevents these muscles in the front, and even the obliques and the muscles up here, prevent it from extending or arching. So under no circumstances, especially under load, if you're carrying objects, if you're getting stuff out of a car, do we want these areas, this area, the cylinder, to degrade? We don't want stuff like a cylinder like, we don't want one like this. This thing's weak, all right? Imagine a can of soda here. Is this a strong can? No, you'd put it right back on the shelf. You don't want this thing. You want the cylinder right here. So this is what we call the pillar system, all right? The reason I say this is because this thing is just basically a pillar, all right? We don't want that corset appearance of the core. We want a nice solid pillar. What we want to use is the balls and sockets, all right? Running, pushing a sled, squatting, deadlifting, uh, jujitsu, everything that I showed you in those other exercises is ball and socket and pillar work. We're working on stiffness of this pillar, we're working on breathing, and we're working on movements of the ball and sockets as they're intended. I believe that gravity has effect on people, posture has an effect on people, devices have an effect on people, but at the same time, we have the responsibility to decrease their effect on us. We control them. Make it your environment. Don't let the environment control you.